I'd like us to look at a topic, trusting God in my limitations. It's very hard to follow. It's very hard to follow someone while in the wake of limitations. And there are many times it's easy to follow but the reality of the matter is that sometimes we are visited by certain limitations in life and as we go, as we come before the Lord, we have some things that tend to hold us back and so there we are some things that also society looks at us and uh, they pull us back. They either pull back our businesses they either pull back our families, they either pull back our work, our academics, or our social life in general. But we have these things that keep on limiting us, keep on inhibiting us to, towards uh, effective following of the master. And as I was looking at this topic carefully, I saw that there may be limitations that has come or are with you because of lack of opportunities. Things that have just come or are with you because you lacked opportunity or opportunities have been snatched or were snatched away from you and you have limitations. There are some things or some limitations that have come because of circumstances. Things that happened or things that have happened that you have and have no control and you have continually lived under those circumstances, but unfortunately the reality is that these circumstances limit you or they inhabit your full performance. Our human hindrances, they are some people that are mean, some people that just stand in your way. If you want to run, they block you. If you want to, to go on, somebody just come and put human hindrance in your way. And so you find that, yes, you like to move on, but there are some of those hindrances. I was looking at this definition, limitation, hindrance to ability or achievement. Yes, the Lord has given us so much potential, the Lord has given us so much ability, but sometimes, unfortunately, as we follow him, we experience these things that inhabit, that come and stand on our way, and they just stop us. And sometimes these things are so psychological. Some of them are wired in our personality. Maybe because of your personality, there are some things that... Uh, or there are some things or some situations that you have been limited to maybe perform well just because of the way you have been wired. And so you get and you feel frustrated because this is just you and you and that's the way you have been made. But unfortunately, those things are real. Those things are real. I think of a story in the Bible and this is the story of a very somebody that maybe we know we may not know but it's found in the book of Second Samuel, chapter 4, verse 4. Second Samuel, chapter 4, verse 4. And the Bible says, Jonathan, the son of Saul, had a son who was crippled in his feet. He was five years old when the news about Saul and Jonathan came from Israel and his nurse took him up and fled. And as she fled in a haste, he fell and became lame. And his name was Memphibosheth or Sheth. Memphi Memphi 
Yeah, there is a tongue twist over there. But Memphibosheth, there is a story or there is an occurrence that is happening and the nurse in haste takes him and tries to run. And as she tries to run, the boy falls down or the nurse or something happens, an accident, and the boy falls down and is crippled. We know why he was crippled, because he fell. Now let's look at John chapter 9. Some things that sometimes we don't know why they happen or why they took place. John chapter 9. Verse 2, the disciples are with Jesus, and the, disi the disciples are walking with Jesus, and they come across someone. And in John chapter 9, verse 2, the Bible says, And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, or Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. There are some occurrences that are known, that it is known this person is this way because this and this happened to them. This person is experiencing this thing because this and this took place. And so, like Memphis, or whatever that name is, <laughs> you'll follow the story. We know why he is crippled, because he fell down and he is crippled. But now, this other story, they are known. They, even the disciples are wondering now, Jesus, why is this person blind? Is it because it's his own sin or the parents? And then Jesus tells the disciples, neither this man nor the parents, but it happened that the power or the, the glory of God may be displayed. Have you ever been walking and you see some situations and you ask yourself, Sasa uyu, ni mama yake mujinga ama ni baba yake mujinga? And then you say, maybe ni pastor wake. There are some things that are not known. But there are some things you, you know, especially in shags. In shags, people have reasons for everything. Something happens or something, or you pass by, they know. They say, I know now you are. We are not going to be That's why I am not going to be So, they have reasons. Shags people have reasons for everything. And so, they have everything. They have answers. Keep away from some friends who always have answers for everything. Because some things, we don't know why they happened, and we have no idea why they're happening, but we know one thing. Occurrences are there. Things that have just occurred, and they have caused us limitations. Now, the, sec the next reading I'm, I'm about to read, it's scary, because this is now, this boy is crippled because he fell down, but now is in a leadership situation whereby the king decrees something. And the king decrees something in 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 8. And 2 Samuel 5, 8, the king says, And David said on that day, Whoever would strike the Jubicides, let him get up the water shaft to attack the lame, and the blind who are hated by David's soul. Therefore, it is said, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. King David has declared that anybody that is lame and is blind should be hated and they should not come to the house. King David passes a decree and he says, 
If anybody is lame or is blind, I do not want to see them. And the Bible records they were hated by David's soul. And so society has their own perspective about our occurrences. Society sometimes, especially the Old Testament, they had some inclination towards uh, wellness. If you are unwell or you have leprosy, it means that you should be secluded or put aside. If you are maybe going through a situation, it meant that you should not come together and fellowship with other people. And David even passes a decree and says, such people should not be with others. And the blind and the lame shall not come into the house, into the house. And so, we have many silent questions that sometimes visit us. Some of these questions are now, who sinned? And what happened? What went wrong? And society even have their own perspective. The society that we live in always have a word towards something or towards things that have taken place. Now, the society that we live in may have what they think or may have their own perspective, but there is the will of God. God, when God says something or when God decrees something, it's not as the same as when society decrees. Because society can say something in a, in a certain way, but it's only the word of God that will stand. No matter what somebody says, it's only the word of God that will stand. The reason why I'm saying that, I want to take the final reading, then we preach. 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 1 to 4. This is now, David has said what he has said in chapter 5. Now listen to chapter 9. Chapter 9, the Bible says, And David said, Is there still anyone left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake, who fell in chapter 4? Who fell in chapter 4? And who is David asking to show favor in chapter 9? No, anybody from the house of? And so David has said some words in chapter 5. What did he say? In chapter 5, what does David say? Let's preach together. Now David is asking, and David said, is there anyone left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Jonathan was David's best friend. He's a friend that rescued his life. He's a friend that walked with him. He's a friend that saw, he, he, he spared his life when Saul was pursuing him. And now David is saying, I cannot forget Jonathan. Jonathan was with me. When his father was mean, Jonathan was with me. Now that I am successful, now that I am a king that has made it, I want to show someone favor. Who is the person that wants to be shown favor? He still does not know. But what was his decree? What was the king's decree in chapter 5? No blind or lame. None of them. And David asked, now there was a servant of, the, now in verse 2 the Bible says, now there was a servant of the house of Saul whose name was Ziba. And they called him to David. And the king said to him, are you Ziba? And he said, I am your servant. And the king said, is there not still someone of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God to him. Ziba said to the king, there is still a son of Jonathan. He is crippled in his feet. Hallelujah. And the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, he is in the house of Machar, the son of Ami Amiel, at Lord Deborah, or Lord, Lord Debar. That's 2 Samuel 9, 1 to 4. Verse 9 then the king said to Ziba, Saul's servant, and he said to him, All that belong to Saul and all to his house I 
I have given to your servant's grandson. And you and your sons and your sons' servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce that your servant's grandson may have bread to eat. But Memphisheth, your servant's grandson, shall always eat at my table. Now, Zip, he shall always eat at my Verse chapter 5 was, chapter 9 is, my table. Not anybody's table, my society may have their own perspective, but when it's time for God to show you favor, it does not matter. It doesn't matter what society has said. It doesn't, David has quickly forgotten that he had passed a decree. But now in chapter 9, it's not David speaking anymore, but it is divine quickening. The Lord has quickened David, and now David has forgotten the decree he passed because divine, I mean, divine quickening of the Lord is happening. And God is showing favor to somebody who had or has limitation. Why? Because God is always having us, even as we follow him, with our limitations, with my limitations, God's favor is not limited by human decrees. Even, I, even if you label me, even if you label somebody, and even if you say whatever you say, if God decrees to bless them, they will be blessed. If the Lord decrees to walk with them, they will. David had said no one should come in the house, but now he's saying this boy, as much as he's crippled, one, ascribe to him all the property that was meant to be of his father. And second, serve him. He's even given servants. Servants all over. God's grace and favor goes beyond societal parts about or concerning your situation. Society may decide things either way or whichever way, but when it's time for God to show you favor, what God decrees, no man can stop. Human declarations are passed every day. We have had some people who have said politically, I will resign over my dead body. Then they resign and they're not yet dead. Human decrees. When God wants to remove you, no matter what you have said, or no matter what you brag with, he will remove you, and he will put you aside, and he will do what he wants to do. God will always do what he wants to do. It happened. It happened to even Ruth. God is always working. We have, we have many testimonies in the Bible. The first testimony we have is of Samson. Samson, it has now been decreed that he is useless and hopeless. Yet it has been decreed that now Samson cannot do anything anymore. He is without power. He will not do anything. And Samson cries to God and say, Lord, one more time. Please, Lord, one more time. Give me, renew my strength one more time. And what they had decreed, they were shocked because the walls came tumbling. Because Samuel was given second favor. The testimony of Anna, it has been said, this will never get a child. This is barren. This is no one. But now, this same Anna is having a testimony and is saying, thank you Lord, they said what they said, but now I'm holding a baby. Nehemiah, Tobiah and Sanballat have said, even the wall you are building, our folks can just jump over and the wall will come down. And so, Tobiah and Sanballat have decreed that Nehemiah, whatever you are doing, is but useless. But in chapter 6, Nehemiah reminds them the wall is now standing. The foxes try to jump, but the wall is standing. Ruth, it was decreed that now you are a widow and now nothing. And in fact, she was winnowing and following 
the leftovers are now in chapter 4. She is not the widow anymore. She is actually the wife to Boaz. And Boaz is the owner of the land. She is now commanding everything. The servants that she used to follow, begging, now are serving her. And they are in the... Be careful the people that you look down upon. Be careful those that you look down upon. They may be your boss. They may be uplifted by God and they, you'll be answering to them. And Ruth, if there are some people who are nasty to her, while she was trying to glean, some would kick her and say, away, move. What a kusumbu out of kazi. And now she's the owner of the estate. And now she's saying, Ulkuna Sema. Ulkuna Sema. Ishamba Nia. Ishamba Niangu. You know, when God gives us limitations, one thing that I'm learning and I was learning as I was preparing this is don't give up in your limitations. Because these are limited, these are things that may be happening. God is setting up a table. The testimony of David. God is setting up a table. God is setting up a table. And I know as this crippled child is at the table, the child is remembering 2 Samuel chapter 5 and looking at David and saying, I'm applying your psalm to you right now. I'm seated at my table with my enemy, you David. I am eating with you, king. Because I was crippled. You passed a decree. But now the Lord has set up a table for me. I'm enjoying the meal that you were enjoying alone. My state is not now final. God remembers us. Amen? God always remembers us. Your limitation may have been because of circumstance or loss of opportunity or because of the things that I may not know. But one thing I know, it's very difficult for us to serve God in and with our limitations. Even as we follow him, there sometimes we look at ourselves and we say, Lord, where are you? Where are you? I feel so limited. Maybe if my family was well placed like Wakina so and so, we would be somewhere. Maybe if my mom did not die. Maybe if my dad did not die. That circumstance. I would be better off. Maybe if I landed that job in January, I would not be suffering what I'm suffering right now in February. Maybe if I was not in this or this situation, I would not be experiencing this and this. You know, it's very hard to trust God when you are limited. But one thing I know, God remembers.